Hello, uh, my name is Sam from the Nothing Definitive series. Um, today I want to talk about uh, um, aversive versus reward-based training um, with dogs. Because I mentioned it before, um, but I kind of wanted to go into it a little bit more because I think it's a good thing. Um, okay, so I'm watching my parents' dog for a whole month. And in preparation for that, I thought their dog is... You know, it's not um, it's not really trained that well, but it's not a, like a bad dog either. It's just a normal dog, basically. Um, but I wanted to try some reward-based training, and I guess this could be the first video. And maybe like in a month from now, I'll make a results video and see if it works. Because I'm going to try and do this every day. So in preparation, I made because um, uh, I'm going to be doing the reward-based. I, I should probably explain that quickly. So aversive um, training is basically the idea where you react to bad behavior um, with punishment. So if your dog is doing something you don't like, it's, you know, hitting them or kicking them or yelling at them, you know, pushing their face, you know, at, on the floor if they peed on it or something like that, um, that would all be considered aversive. Um, Reward-based is the idea, idea that instead of punishing for bad behavior, re you reward when they do good things. And what they learn is that I, you know, because they want the treats, they love food, they love things that they like. So the idea is that they learn to only do good behavior because they know that if they do good behavior, there is a statistical chance, although they probably don't know statistics, but there's a statistical chance that they will get a reward. And what I made was this. Um, I got the idea from my professor in college because I took a dog psychology class. And he mentioned that what he did was he chopped up hot dogs into like, um, like the size of nickels or whatever, and then you would cut those into fourths, and um, that's what I did. The dog that's here, which I'll move the webcam, hopefully this isn't really loud or anything, um, you can see. It's a West Highland Terrier. Uh, he was giving these, I mean, these are really small for humans. Um, hopefully you can see it. This little thing right here, so there's my finger. It's very tiny. He was giving these size to a uh, full-grown German Shepherd. So even for a West Highland Terrier, this is probably quite a bit. Because um, the idea is you're giving these constantly, like, you know, all day long whenever they're doing good behavior. It's not just like, here, have a treat um, <laughs> randomly. Like some people do, you know, like most people just kind of give their dog a treat like randomly or whatever. This is like constant because the, that, that's the idea is like they learn that um, all the good behaviors result in treats. Um, so how I made this was, it was very s simple, although it was, a f it was somewhat time consuming. Um, I bought a package of hot dogs, which are extremely cheap, uh, cut them up into the like nickel sized um, shapes or whatever. Then I put those nickel sized cutouts on a food dehydrator, dehydrated them for, I don't know, probably like three hours not totally dehydrated. I didn't want them like rock hard because I feel like I wouldn't want to eat it if it was rock hard. So, I mean, their jaws are stronger, I guess, but whatever. I, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I basically dehydrated it till it was still like, you know, kind of squishy, but most of the moisture and the oils and stuff were out. Then I dried them with paper towels to get all the excess oil off. So that way they are, um, they're, you know, you can break them. They're chewy. And, uh, but they're dry, so like I actually had some of these in my pocket just a little bit ago while I was walking around, and uh, you could still eat them. <laughs> um, and uh, they won't, you know, like get your pocket full of oils and stuff like that. Uh, it tastes like a hot dog, so they actually taste better this way, I think. The hot dogs I bought were only 80 cents for a pack, and um, they didn't taste very good. But this tastes, this kind of tastes better when they're like this. Okay, so that was the first thing I did. Um, and uh, so I guess I'll just give a, some quick examples. So like, uh, as you can see, she sees that I'm handling the food, so she's interested in me, and that's what you want. I mean, you want your dog to be interested in you, looking at you, looking for like, what am I supposed to be doing? Is, is what I'm doing right now good or bad? Um, you want like eye contact every time she sits nicely or even just stands there and um, gives me good eye contact. I give her one. Um, so, I mean, she's obviously very interested in them. So. 
if I bring one down here. So she's giving me eye contact to say, you know, like, can I have another one? What do you want me to do? She sits nicely, gives me eye contact in there. Good girl. And that's basically, that's really all you're doing. Um, anytime they're doing something that you're like, I, that's what I want from my dog. Basically think of like, what do you want your dog to be like, you know, in all situations. And whenever they're doing the right things, have these on you and reward them, you know. Give them the treat, pet them, tell them good, and you can start to shape their behavior. Now, the the obvious drawback to this method is that it's very slow. I mean, if you if your dog is doing something bad and you hit it, it's going to stop doing that, and it probably won't do it again because it's going to fear getting hit. It hurts, right? Um, but the but then that sucks because you're basically choosing a training method that makes you upset angry, aggravated, or whatever, makes your dog fear you, it, it increases the likelihood that they'll lash out. I mean, if you hit your dog, it might try and bite you, or it might, I mean, you don't want your dog to, like, fear you. Every time you come around, its ears are back, and it's scared, um, or you lift your hand, not to even hit it, you just lift your hand for whatever reason, and it, like, cowers. I mean, that's not a good thing. Why, why would you ever eat why would you want your dog to be like that? It, you don't want it to fear you. That's, and I mean, that so much of that has been, um, taught to people all around the world because of like shows like the dog whisperer where they they teach like the dominance hierarchy you know you know be the alpha male or whatever and like that works it absolutely does work but it is aversive it is it is the easy easy method that produces violence more or less so as a result if you are like a caring human being basically and you want your dog you and your dog to have a, a good relationship, like one that where, you know, they're interested in you and you're happy and you get to reward them all the time. You can shape their behavior by giving them these. So, um, yeah, so that may, I think that's what I'll do. I think um, in a month from now, I will make a results video. I'll let you know how it turned out because it'll be interesting. This dog is... Um, her name's Chloe. She is seven or eight years old. So she's, you know, getting... Um, like into the elderly or late stages of her life. Um, so I'm not sure how well this will work on a dog that's, you know, not a puppy anymore. I mean, if it was, if she was a puppy or something, you could really train the hell out of them. <laughs> but uh, it'll be interesting to see. So, um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Please consider reward-based training. It is by far superior in my opinion. If you want to know more information, there are really good books out there, um, specifically one called... Um, Applied Dog Behavior. I think that's what it's called. There's a, a much longer title. So look up like Applied Dog Behavior Volume 1 and you'll find a, a great book on that sort of stuff. So thanks for watching. See you next time.